point. When and where would the shell necklace would have been made? Um, well, this is quite a contemporary example, but made in the traditional style. So it's really echoing um, the way that shell beads have been made for hundreds of years by women. What would the purpose of the necklace would have been? Um, primarily ornamentation. I mean, it's there to just make someone really look nice, but they're also given as gifts and as items of exchange. Can you tell us a bit about how the necklaces were traditionally made? Shells are actually collected um, from the sea, then they're smoked over a fire, and that softens the outside. And then using mutton bird or penguin oil, um, rub the outside to expose this lovely shiny quality and even though that sounds quite simple it's not it's quite a laborious process for each shell you have to do and you get this wonderful blue tinge but you also get some really nice greens as well so they're very beautiful items what was the importance of necklace making to the Tasmanian community people wear dormant day to day and they also wear them for ceremonies and for important occasions so something like this is something that people would wear to beautify themselves what experience the museums had with repatriation in 1997? Um, well, 1997, we repatriated Truganini, so the bracelet and necklace. The reasons why we repatriated the shell bracelet and necklace is because they were believed to have been made, worn by Truganini. Truganini was a, a Tasmanian folk hero. Uh, what would you say is the museum's stance or your stance on repatriation? We're very positive about looking at repatriation and we take it on a case-by-case -case basis. So we will gladly work with indigenous groups. We don't need any uh, middle men at all. Um, indigenous communities can contact us directly and we will happily talk to them about their concerns, their needs and see if we can help. But before we do that we need to collect all the information first about why this might be important to a community if it's sent back what will they do with it, how will it be used, um, the sort of benefits they will acquire. Um, I need to have all that first. What responsibilities need to be considered in relation to Aboriginal culture from presenting artefacts? It's a very good question. The things to consider is the Aboriginal voice because every object has a story and they carry different perspectives and often what one finds missing is the Aboriginal voice. So what anthropologists and museum people have done in recent years is to go and visit those communities, show them images or actual artefacts and ask them for their opinion. Um, and so including their voice is very, very important.